Hey, this is Linda Cohn from ESPN, and you're listening to the ML Sports Platter. The ML Sports Platter back with you. It's all brought to you by Barks and Rec Doggy Daycare, Liverpool Physical Therapy, and Brian Conboy of Mass Mutual in New York State. Get your financial future in order today with Brian. Advisors.massmutual.com. He's on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. We went with Brian, super pumped up about where things are headed. You can find out what's out there. You know, you might be retiring soon, a youngster going off to college, whatever the case may be. Let Brian Conboy of Mass Mutual New York State handle your financial future. Tip of the cap, thank you as well to Axe Exotic Pets and Rosie's Corner. I'm Mike Lindsley at Mike L Sports on Twitter. And of course, Mike L Sports, uh, excuse me, ML Sports Platter on Instagram. Just changed that handle up to kind of mix and match uh, a few more things uh, uh, together uh, with the show. And uh, would love to hear from you on email for show topic ideas or anything that's bugging you in the world of sports, something that's on your mind, Mike L Sports 1979 at gmail.com. That email also applies if you'd like to become an advertiser of the show. So in podcast last week, I spent a ton, a ton of time on AFC East, North, right, South, and West division NFL recaps, you know, per team, kind of the outlook, gave some grades, etc. And I'm actually going to focus on this entire podcast right here on the NFC draft recaps. So I'm going to go division by division, you know, team by team, what I like, players, where they're from, um, you know, potential, long-term, short-term, all, all you know, how many boxes were checked, etc. I'm going to go all over the board here and cover the entire NFC in this podcast. Again, going division by division and team by team. Let's start with the NFC East and the Dallas Cowboys, who I think had one of the best drafts uh, out there. And, and I'm thinking maybe finally Jerry Jones, you know, leaned on his football people a little bit more here. Again, I don't think the Cowboys. Can be a threat as a Super Bowl champion until Jerry Jones basically relinquishes his duties as uh, as the primary general manager. It just makes no sense to me. But they got an absolute monster in the first round. Micah Parsons is one of the best players in this draft. 6'3", 246 out of Penn State. He's got it all. I mean, when you talk about size, range, great tackler, uh, he can disrupt the interior. The foot speed is great. He slips blocks. He shoots gaps. Um... And he's really good man-to-man as well. He's got those cover traits and flashes as a pass rusher. Uh, He's just got a nose and an instinct for the football. This is a really great pick. Remember, Dallas uh, finished 28th in scoring defense last year. And I think Parsons here, I mean, when you talk about checking all the boxes, you talk about immediate impact, you talk about need, you talk about want, you talk about everything. Really, really great. And, you know, I realize that they have Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Der Esch, but... You know, you gotta have you gotta have Micah Parsons if he's on the board, and they want to add more depth. And again, the versatility of a Parsons, you know, you can kind of move him around a little bit sometimes as well. Um, he's an inside linebacker, but the way his athleticism wreaks, uh, <clears throat> you know, chaos on other offenses, perhaps you could even develop him into a guy who could play. Uh, on the outside at times as well. I just love this pick. I think Micah Parsons is going to be a stud uh, in this league. And, you know, bust and run fits and coverage overshadowed the numbers last year, right? That's what a scouting report, I'm you know, or a review of the draft, I should say. I'm, I'm reading it verbatim. The Cowboys already have talent in Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Der Esch, but bust and run fits and coverage overshadowed the numbers last year. Plus Van Der Esch, I forgot about this, too. He missed 13 games over the past two years, and you have the retirement of Sean Lee. So this is just a really, really good pick. I think Parsons is an absolute monster. Meanwhile, they go get Kelvin Joseph out of Kentucky, a solid corner, uh, a guy who many reports say can start right away. Uh, third round, uh, the Cowboys really went nuts on defense in this draft. Uh, Chauncey Golston, uh, excuse me, Osa 
Odigahusa, is that how you pronounce that, out of UCLA at the defensive tackle? I have no idea. I don't know anything about him. Uh, trying to beef up the line, though. Chauncey Golston from Iowa, a defensive end uh, in the third round as well. They had three third-round picks. Nashawn Wright out of Oregon State, another corner for the Dallas Cowboys there. Jabril Cox, number f- uh, uh, in the fourth round out of LSU, another inside linebacker adding depth to position, a guy who... Uh, you know, he's just a freak athlete. You know, he's just he comes from the football factory of LSU with the crazy athleticism and football skill to complement it. Just a, another defensive pick here. Then they go offense for the next two. Josh Ball out of Marshall <clears throat> and Simi Fahoko out of Stanford, the wide receiver. Uh, then they go back to defense in terms of Quentin Bahana out of Kentucky, a defensive tackle, and then Israel Mukumu. I, I don't really know a lot about the last, I don't know, five, six, seven picks here. Um, and, and they had 10 picks in this draft, by the way. Uh, but what I know is that Dallas <clears throat> really wanted to shore up their defense. They want to uh, uh, create some playmakers, have some guys who can be instant impact guys. I think, you know, you're looking at Odigahusa and, and, and probably Joseph and definitely Micah Parsons being instant impact guy uh, guys. Uh, because of the Micah Parsons pick particularly, and going out and getting what they want and, and, and getting some value late in this draft, I, I'm going to go with Dallas here as a B plus. <clears throat> I think they had a pretty solid draft. I really do. New York Giants, uh, you know what? Really smart draft. I know there's a lot of Giants fans. There are a lot of Giant fans out there who are uh, down on David Gettleman, uh, that he didn't really go out and do a lot after that first pick. Um, but again, we don't know what all these guys are going to do in the draft at all. Uh, you have an eye for talent. You think you know who you're taking. Some work, some don't. Circumstances surrounding, um, you know, these players certainly, you know, play into it as well. Um, <clears throat> but their first pick, you can't argue with. Canarius Tony uh, has a great profile for the next level. He's a burner. He can develop into a number one. Uh yeah, he's a slot, a dangerous slot receiver, but I think they're going to try to use him a little bit outside the boundary as well. Uh, a return man, he's great in space, he's explosive, and I think this is a really good pick for the Giants because they wanted to go wide receiver probably here in the first round, but once the Bears were like, dude, we're jumping up to get Justin Fields, and we need a dance partner, the Giants were too, too, too agreeable, right, in terms of doing that so they could move down, stockpile some picks. I thought it was smart, and then as you move down, you can still get a guy in Tony who can help you out. Really good uh, route runner in terms of uh, uh, Tony. He's really made strides. Florida did some great stuff with him in open space and schemes, and he's just kind of a natural player. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. Um, we know that the Giants signed John Ross after releasing Golden Tate, but he, does, he hasn't even gotten 30 passes in a season. Tony is a guy who's really, really dangerous in the slot. And remember, they went out and got Kenny Galladay. Um, and they also have Slayton, and they have Sterling Shepard. They've got tight end Evan Ingram. So now what you've done here is you've got Tony playing in the slot, the one missing link, Daniel Jones. This is another piece for the New York football giants to say, hey, is Daniel Jones our guy? Surround him with talent. Look at Mahomes. Look at Allen. Surround him with talent. Look at Breeze when he, you know, he retired just now, but uh, just recently. But you know, uh, he's always had somebody around him. He's had Kamara. He's had Thomas, Aaron Rodgers. And I know Rodgers and some Packer fans think he hasn't had weapons. I think it's absurd. I'm going to do uh, some stuff on that uh, as this drama continues with him and the Green Bay Packers, but. I think he's had tons when you look at Jordy Nelson, Devontae Adams, you know, you look at Aaron Jones just re-signed, uh, Donald Driver ring a bell. I mean, come on. Uh, so I, I think this Tony pick is really good. I, and I don't, I said earlier, I, I think they could use, could use Tony outside the boundary, but I don't think they'll use him a ton out there. Uh, maybe in, in spots to just kind of keep the defense honest just line him up, and then you hand it off to Saquon, right? And then you put him back in the slot. Something like that. Uh, he'll be mostly using the slot, I think, in 2021 and beyond. Aziz Ojulari, I'll tell you what, the outside linebacker out of Georgia, really good pick here. I mean, second rounder, uh, you know, a lot of people have waxed poetic that this guy might be a first-round talent. The Giants got in the second round, and the Giants need to be- really beef up their edge speed, not just up front, but also 
uh, in the linebacker area, and that does that here. Aaron Robinson out of Central Florida, a cornerback. Really good pick here uh, as well, a big physical guy. Um, he's uh, he's going to be able to, to do some things, I think, at six foot and almost 200 pounds for New York, um, you know, going up against – uh, the receivers in the division and throughout the NFL. Uh, outside linebacker depth, again, Northern Iowa's Ellerson Smith. Then they went Gary Brightwell from Arizona, the running back, and Radarius Williams from Oklahoma State, another cornerback to beef up that position. I think overall the Giants, nah, I'd give them a B-plus as well, and most of it is because those top three picks, Darius Toney, Azizo Juleri, and Aaron Robinson. Really good stuff there. From the Giants, and now we see if Daniel Jones can do his thing. Philadelphia Eagles, boy, do they need a lot of help. Again, they were one of the three clubs, uh, or was it four, three at least, in the first round. You know, that theme to uh, get your former college teammate, you know, on the roster, right? You know, create some cohesion, some chemistry, etc. Well, they did that with Devontae Smith. Um, doing a little trade with the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys went down, picked up uh, some more draft capital, and then they get Micah Parsons. The Eagles, meanwhile, go offense. They wanted a burner. They wanted number one, and they wanted somebody who's played with Jalen Hurts, and that's exactly what Devontae Smith provides. Elite route runner. He's consistent. He can get separation. People are kind of worried about his size at six foot 170. I say, screw that. If he can play, he can play. And, oh, by the way, with the conditioning programs in the NFL – uh, just like at Alabama, he'll put on 10 pounds in the next year or two. Not really worried about that. He's really good with the footwork, He and he can locate open spots in man and in zone. Uh, he's got great hands. You never saw him really drop a ball at Alabama. I, I think this is really good. Uh, and you know what? I think it's good for the Eagles to get, you know, kind of a, a, a Deshaun Jackson-type feel again in that offense because I think when the Eagles offense was humming in recent years at the peak I think you know it was it was having a burner and I think this is a good thing for the Eagles Deshaun Jackson by the way was released after playing in five games last year Alshon Jeffrey was released after catching just six balls um they need a wide out they need a major playmaker they need an instant impact guy and that's exactly what they've got here Roll Tide, Landon Dickerson from Alabama, a center taken in the second round, help protect Jalen Hurts. Milton Williams out of Louisiana Tech. These next several players, I have no idea. I have no idea uh, what, what any of them provide. Uh, a defensive tackle out of Louisiana Tech. Uh, it, it looks like the Eagles just kind of went all over the board. Uh, you know, they really wanted to hit a ton of positions. They also had a ton of draft capital. I mean, what is this? They have one. They had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine picks. Man, uh, Milton Williams, defensive tackle out of Louisiana Tech. Okay, yeah, Zach, uh, Zach McPherson out of Texas Tech, a corner. Kenneth Gainwell out of Memphis, a running back. Marion Tupulatu out of USC, a defensive tackle. Coastal Carolina, a defensive end. Taron Jackson and Jacoby Stevens out of LSU, a safety. And then Tulane, outside linebacker. Patrick Johnson. So good job by the Eagles. I, I give them a B. Uh, I don't think they did anything wildly amazing. I don't think they blew away anything on paper, etc. But you get Devontae Smith. You get your number one guy. That's good enough for me to get a B. And then from there, you just really filled a lot of holes, man. A lot of needs, a lot of wants. And uh, we'll see what the Eagles can provide. There's no doubt that Devontae Smith is uh, is a guy they coveted for sure. Uh, Jamin Davis, let's go to the Washington football team, a team, by the way, that I think is not that far away, uh, a team that I thought in in the um, first round, you know, here they are at 19, I, I thought they should have traded up to get a quarterback. Um, I think there may be a quarterback away from being good for a really, really long time, or if that quarterback starts right away and is really, really great, I think Washington can make some major noise. This is a team that I know the division was bad last year and all the rest. I get it. But they're really, really well coached. They're, they're sound. The the running game and defense travel well. Uh, you know, you get Ron Rivera going. I mean, you know, they've been playing for him, obviously, fighting the cancer last year. They have a, a, a bona fide generational talent in, 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 in Chase Young. 
I think this team's awesome uh, as far as what the potential could be. Um, you know, we know that they had the Alex Smith situation going all over the place. They didn't know what they really wanted to do. Uh, Haskins and, and all that. Uh, they have Ryan Fitzpatrick now. That's nice. That can win you another division. But don't you want to make noise in the postseason? And I think they need to find a franchise quarterback. There's no doubt. They're just, they keep putting Band-Aids over uh, a cut that keeps bleeding. And so they've got to fix the bleeding. they got to stop the bleeding. I thought they should have gotten a quarterback. Having said that, Jamin Davis, not a bad backup uh, plan here. 6'4", 234, uh, an instinctive off-ball linebacker, good length, great range, awesome tackler, reliable, balance, explosion, all those things that you hear. And uh, in a Ron Rivera defense, a guy who knows how to mix and match and a guy who knows how to put somebody in a really good spot, I think he's going to flourish in Washington. Washington had a ton of picks as well, man. I mean, it's amazing how many picks some of these teams have. Uh, had in the draft. Uh, they go Samuel Cosme, the talented offensive tackle out of Texas. Uh, a, a great pick here because they got to keep protecting the quarterback. Benjamin St. Juste from Minnesota, a corner. Uh, they're really looking at him and also Cosme as being immediate impact guys, uh, obviously, as well as uh, Jamin Davis from Kentucky. Uh, Dylan uh, Diami Brown out of North Carolina, a wide receiver. John Bates, Boise State, a tight end. Derek Forrest out of Cincinnati, a safety. Cameron Cheeseman of Michigan, a, a, a safety as well. William Bradley King from Baylor, an outside linebacker. Uh, Shaka Tony from Penn State, a defensive end. And Dax Milne, I believe, out of BYU. So they add a couple of pieces offensively. I think these are guys who they're hoping probably help them in 2022 and beyond. Uh, Washington taking a chance on some weapons to hopefully help you. Uh, down the line. Uh, I don't think the Redskins had a great, or the Washington football team, I don't think they had a great draft, but I don't think they had an awful draft. We'll throw it right in the middle and give them a C. ML Sports Platter brought to you by Stanley Law Offices, Bryant and Stratton College, and our good friends at the Allen Angus Pub. Congratulations to the Allen Angus Pub for their unbelievable Unbelievable success with the New York State Burger of the Year with that candied uh, bacon and, and, and the French onion strings and all the rest. It's just a delicious burger. Congratulations to Randy, Matt, Ann, and the gang. A proud ML Sports Platter sponsor and the official pub of the program as well. If you're in and around Central New York, get on over to the Allen Angus Pub for the best darn Angus Burger in town. Let's go to the NFC North and break these down. Uh, Justin Fields to the Chicago Bears. We'll, we'll look at the Bears first. Um, I, I just think this pick is great. I really do. Uh, Justin Fields fell. Uh, I don't know why. I, I loved his game in college. He was great on the big stage. He you know, showed that he could take a hit and get back up. He's got a strong arm. He's a hybrid. He fits everything that the NFL model is today. He's tall. He's big, 6'3", 227. I don't understand why he kept dropping. Uh, it was just absolutely absurd. And the anticipation of the throw and his accuracy, it's gotten better, uh, especially on the deep ball. And, you know, look, head coach Matt Nagy needs a young quarterback. I mean, the Bears completely and utterly blew the Mitch Trubisky situation. Um, they need to figure out this this deal. Uh, and Matt Nagy, I don't... I think Ryan Pace is more of the problem in Chicago than Matt Nagy, although I don't love Nagy either. But he tried to implement the system and the concepts, and it was a failure. Trubisky just could not convert a lot of those. Can Fields do that? Will they run the same offense? Will they tinker it to help Justin Fields? And we know Nick Foles and Andy Dalton are both on the wrong side of 30, and they're not the long-term answer. The Bears went up. They got aggressive. You're dealing with a franchise of 101 years of quarterback sadness uh, I, I love this. I love this pick for the Bears. I really do. Uh, then they protect Justin Fields, right? They go get Tevin Jenkins from Oklahoma State, an offensive tackle, another tackle out of Missouri, and Larry Borum. Uh, then they go to Virginia Tech running back Khalil Herbert, and, and here could be the steal of the draft after Fields, frankly. I mean, this guy has the upsides, unbelievable, terrific motor. Uh, they do want to get some depth back there as well. Daz Newsom, a wide receiver out of North Carolina. Thomas Graham Jr. out of Oregon, a corner. And then uh, they, they went out and got um, Kyrie's Tonga from BYU, a defensive tackle. So the Bears went out and, and, and helped both sides of the ball. The big jewel pick was Justin Fields. And from an aggressive standpoint and from a, you know, a want, I mean, they really, really wanted this player. 
I'm going to give him an A minus. I am because I think Fields. I, I think Fields is going to be really good in the NFL. I just I really love his game. Can't say enough about it. Let's go to the Vikings. Um, solid draft. Um, again, another team that had tons of picks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Christian Darius, Darisaw is really, really good. I couldn't believe people were not talking about him as much in the first round. I know that Penay Sewell and Slater were getting the talk. I get that. But man, Darisaw is really good. He's great in terms of zone blocking, power, and he just knocks people off course. You know, he's got an aggressive, nasty approach. Uh, he's long. He's huge, six five three twenty two. Um, I, I love this pick, man. I do for Minnesota, and they do need big time offensive help. Kirk Cousins running for his life the last couple of years. Great pick here. Kellen Mond out of Texas A and M picked in the third round. My God, they had four picks in the third round. Did the Minnesota Vikings? They go and get a quarterback, perhaps, of the future here. Kirk Cousins isn't going to play forever, and I think this pick is smart. a and ran a crazy gimmick, uh, wild offense under Jimbo and company. Mon can really sling it deep. I like this pick a lot. Chaz Surratt out of North Carolina, an inside linebacker with a great motor. Good pick there. Offensive guard, Ohio State. Wyatt Davis is picked in the third round as well. They want to get more speed on the edge and in the inside. They want to disrupt more plays again. You're in the north, so you're going to be charging towards Jared Goff, towards possibly Aaron Rodgers, uh, chasing Justin Fields here for years possibly. So good move here to get some help there. Uh, Wyatt Davis, sorry, offensive guard, uh, help with protection uh, for uh, Justin Fields. The defensive end out of Pittsburgh is what I was referring to. Patrick Jones taken. Uh, really, really nice player here. Edge guy can get to the quarterback fast. Uh, Cameron Bynum out of California, a corner taken in the fourth round. Janarius Robinson, the defensive end out of Florida State. Solid pick here, trying to beef up. Again, edge speed, edge rush, outside linebackers, inside linebackers, playmaking, speed, explosion. There's just lacking a lot of that on defense right now. Uh, Amir Smith-Marset out of Iowa, a wide receiver to, to, to help some depth there with Jefferson and company. Zach Davidson uh, out of uh, Central Missouri, a tight end, and then Jalen Twyman out of Pittsburgh, a defensive tackle. Don't know a lot about the last few picks there, but overall I think the Vikings really had a nice draft. I would give it a B-plus. Christian Darisaw I think is going to be a stud. I like the pick with Mond. You know, you got to get uh, you know they filled a lot of needs, and you got to go out and get people who you think can help you, um, who can check all the boxes. And at least Minnesota uh, sees that right there, and 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 went out and got all their people. So uh, good for them for sure. Green Bay Packers. We know that Aaron Rodgers in that situation, the drama just continues. As we record this, he is still a Green Bay Packer. Um, Aaron Rodgers, did he go crazy in the first round? Did he drink that scotch again because they went out and got a defensive player? Uh, what's hilarious is that the Packers secondary was arguably their weak spot last year. So regardless of what Aaron Rodgers thinks, they need to go out and get a corner, and they did that with Eric Stokes, a guy who I think is terrific. He's a press corner, great size, great length, great top-end speed. Uh, I think he's going to be really good. He's a 6'1", a 200-pound or, or so corner uh, and, and he can pick six it without question. He picked off four passes, including two for touchdowns um, in nine games last year. He's, he's really good. And he's you know played on the biggest stage, SEC, et cetera, knocks the ball loose, and he can go up against the number ones with size as well. So I think this is going to be a really, really good one for Green Bay. Uh, and remember, um, the Packers really – are in a spot similar to Dallas or Minnesota where one unit really just needs a lot of beef, a lot of a, a lot of umph, a lot of playmaking. Uh, for Dallas, it's linebacker and up front. For Minnesota, it's probably up front, inside and outside linebacker as well, probably secondary as well. Uh, this is a great pick for Green Bay. I mean, this is a need, this is a want, this is a best player on the board all in one probably at 29. 
for the Packers. Josh Myers, the Ohio State center. Nice job there. More protection for Aaron Rodgers or whoever is quarterback of the Packers. Amari Rodgers, you know, they did go out and kind of, I think, steal a Clemson wide receiver. I mean, how many times can you get uh, uh, in the third round a guy out of Clemson with that kind of skill set? You know, I think they probably got a second round talent or even better here. Amari Rodgers, I followed his whole career at Clemson. He's terrific. And I think that's outstanding. Uh, and a great weapon add there for Green Bay. Royce Newman, the Ole Miss offensive guard taken in the fourth round. Uh, Tatterell Slayton out of Florida, defensive tackle. Shamar Jean Charles out of Appalachian State, a corner. Uh, Cole Van Landen out of Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, excuse me, an offensive tackle. And then they took Isaiah McDuffie out of Boston College, an inside linebacker. And then Kylan Hill out of Mississippi State a running back to add depth to Jones and A.J. Dillon. But, you know, the class of this of this draft for the Packers, it's it's easily Eric Stokes and it's easily Amari Rodgers, uh, a, a potential shutdown corner and a potential uh, long-term guy who can, who can do a lot of things. Versatility is going to be huge for the Packers moving forward with wide receivers, and he provides just that. The Detroit Lions, I am going to give a B plus two uh, in this draft. I love multiple picks here. Mm-hmm. Penny Sewell, you can't argue it at all. Uh, remember, the Lions traded Matt Stafford for Jared Goff. They need more help up front. Well, you might just have gotten your blindside tackle for the next 10 years. Crazy good foot speed, crazy good reach, crazy great power. Uh, he does have short arms for an elite offensive tackle. But he gets set so quickly and lands the punch that it just probably doesn't matter. And I think that, you know, the Lions can really, really use Panay Sewell. Remember, left tackle Taylor Decker, he's coming off a pretty great season. Um, Detroit could have gone elsewhere, there's no doubt. But when he's on the board, I mean, somebody that good, seventh overall, I, I mean, why not add that and protect the Lions ranked 10th in sacks allowed and 30th in rushing offense last season. And they just added the best offensive lineman in the draft. So they're taking the talent and they're figuring out everything afterwards. Great pick. Levi Anwuzuriki out of Washington. Did I get that right? The defensive tackle taken in the second round. Ali McNeil, NC State defensive tackle. Uh... I'll tell you what, Ify Melifonwo in the third round, I think, is a great pick for Detroit as well. Detroit's one of these teams every single year in the NFL draft, right? They need this, they need that, they need this, they need that. Uh, They didn't have tons of draft capital. I mean, they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys, uh, you know, picked. But Melifonwo was a physical, really good player, play man, could play zone. Uh, I think he's going to do well in Detroit. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, is that right? USC wide receiver, playmaker, I guess. I don't know really a lot about him. Derek Barnes, a Purdue inside linebacker. And then Jamar Jefferson out of Oregon State, a running back. So that's the pick there. Uh, the picks for, for the uh, pa- uh, for the uh, Lions, I think they did a, a, a nice job. I think Penny Sewell is going to be a monster. I really do. All right, let's go NFC South. I'm going to start with the Atlanta Falcons. And there was no way... You you weren't taking, you know, with that new regime and with the offense, the weapons, and the commitment to Matt Ryan, there was no way you weren't going to take the guy everybody, including me, says is the best player in the draft, Kyle Pitts, the tight end from Florida. I mean, can you imagine Arthur Smith waking up every single day creating plays for this offense, him and his staff, coordinator, etc. Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Matt Ryan, Kyle Pitts. Wow, explosion. <laughs> you know, I mean, wh- this guy plays the tight end position, running routes like a wide receiver. He's a hybrid tight end receiver with just, I don't know as if we've ever seen maybe a Tony Gonzalez come out with that blend of size, length, and top-end speed. I don't know if that's, I mean, maybe maybe Tony Gonzalez or an Anthony Gates, I, I guess. He's just a matchup problem regardless. Uh, in line, he can work out of the slot, he can split out wide. Um, and like I said, he runs routes like a wide receiver. 
crazy amazing frame at 6'6", 245. He can go deep, he can go short, he can run after the catch, he's got great hands, he's a physical nightmare at 6'6", 245. Um, he's too big for corners to cover, and he's too fast for linebackers to cover. I, this is, I, 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 you know, I hope Kyle Pitts works out, because I, I, I think... He's such a great player, had such a you know awesome pro days and all the rest. I really hope he ends up being a stud. I really do. By the way, the Falcons, goodness gracious, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine picks in this draft as well. Wow. Uh, and I don't really know a ton about all the other guys. I'm just going to rip through them. Richie Grant's uh, uh, Central Florida uh, safety taken in the second round. Jalen Mayfield. Actually, I know a little bit about Jalen Mayfield, offensive tackle. Uh, good pick there because you got to really shore up that line. I think Atlanta's offensive line was a little too Swiss cheese the last couple of years. Got to protect Matt Ryan, especially as he ages. Good pick there. Darren Hall, San Diego State corner out of the fourth round. Drew Dahlman out of Stanford, the center in the fourth round. Taquan Graham out of Texas, a defensive tackle in the fifth. Um, Ade Takumbo Ogundejeli. Ogun, Ogundeji. DG, Ogan DG, I don't know who he is. Notre Dame defensive end, I guess. I've seen some Notre Dame games this year. I don't recall him. Uh, Avery Williams, Boise State corner. And then Frank Darby, Arizona State wide receiver, just adding more depth to an offense that should be explosive. Mayfield at offensive tackle. And then Kyle Pitts, those are my two favorite picks. I'm going to give the Falcons an A- minus here because they got Pitts. He could be that generational for this football team. So I'm going to go 8 minus, no question. And you know what? They didn't cave for the quarterback. They didn't cave and saying, well, Matt Ryan shot this and that. You know, no. We're going to stick with him. You know, the rules benefit. He still has a couple of good years. We're going to try to, you know, make another Super Bowl run. We've got another, you know, regime in here that, that, that knows offense. I like it. I like it. Uh, let's go Carolina. J.C. Horn, stud. Eighth overall pick out of South Carolina. Um, When you watch the games he played, always was covering the number one. Always covering the number one wide receiver. Versatile, inside, outside, speed, tough, uh, length. Uh, He's terrific. Um, And he tracks the ball so well. He's got great instinct. And it's going to be hard to throw deep on this guy. 61205 can match up physically. Terrific stuff here. I, I think the Carolina Panthers, by the way, had just a fantastic draft. They go out and get Terrace Marshall Jr. out of LSU, one of the more underrated players on the Tigers. Brady Christensen of BYU, an offensive tackle to continue to, to shore up the offensive line. Tommy Tremble could be a steal. The tight end out of Notre Dame. Same thing with Chuba Hubbard from Oklahoma State, the running back. I mean, I, you know, I'm looking at this going. You know, the fourth, third, fourth, fifth rounds are the perfect rounds to take running backs. Chuba Hubbard's really good. And Matt Rule wants to get more balance in the offense and more depth in the offense. Uh, they want He wants to play people off each other. Christian McCaffrey, Chuba Hubbard. I mean, you got some major, major shifty guys back there. Big time. Uh, Davalon Nixon out of Iowa, defensive tackle in the fifth round. Keith Taylor, a corner from Washington. Deontay Brown out of Alabama, an offensive guard. Uh, Shai Smith out of South Carolina, a wide receiver to help there with depth. Thomas Fletcher out of Alabama, a, a, a safety. Those fifth and sixth round picks. And then Phil Hoskins out of Kentucky, a defensive tackle. I, I think Carolina did a lot here. I mean, they checked a lot of boxes. Long-term, short-term, needs, wants, great skill sets. Uh, and they got a possible generation player, generational player in one J.C. Horn. I, I just think it's a... Uh, really a fantastic job by Carolina, by Matt Rule, who I think really gets it. I think they're going to be really, really good in the near future. Matt Rule uh, coached them pretty well last year. Uh, Carolina had a nice year. They've got great potential. I think they have a bright future in Pantherland. Let's go to the New Orleans Saints. I don't think they did anything wildly great, anything wildly awful. I'll give them a C. I don't even know a lot about their players other than Peyton Turner, who's a complete and utter freak. Defensive end at number 28. He's super active, super disruptive. Uh, Again, another guy who is a prototypical NFL edge rusher. A little bit taller and a little bit lighter in terms of the weight. So this is a good pick for them. They have to shore up that pass rush. And you're in the division, again, (laughs) you know, 
with uh, with Tom Brady and with Matt Ryan. Um, you know, so you know you you, you got to figure. I, I don't know what Sam Darnold will do in Carolina, but you know those two main guys are Matt Ryan and Tom Brady. You got to get you got to get major pass rush. New Orleans just was missing that. Uh, they were missing a lot of defensive playmaking ability, and that's where they went with the first three uh, three picks. They go Pete Werner from Ohio State, an inside linebacker in the second. They go Paulson Adebo out of Stanford, a corner in the third. Then they go back to offense and Ian Book, a Notre Dame quarterback. I love this pick. Love it. Uh, you know, Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston battling out and all the rest, but keep creating competition Uh, Ian Book on the board, a guy who ran a great offense, did unbelievable things against the best competition, handled the quarterback position at Notre Dame extremely well. The pressure is real there. I think this is a good one, and you put him into a Sean Payton offense, learning the playbook, holding the clipboard, learning a little bit from some other guys. I think it would have been a little bit better if Ian Book was learning under Drew Brees, of course, but good pick, good solid pick, adds depth, adds competition. And who knows, Book could maybe take over in 2022 and beyond. Landon Young, Kentucky, offensive tackle in the sixth. Quan Baker out of South Alabama, a wide receiver uh, in the seventh. So really, uh, I'd give him a C, no doubt. I don't think, again, nothing overwhelming, nothing underwhelming uh, for this team in New Orleans. Tampa Bay, um, I'm going to give him a, a a B minus, I think. You know, I, I think they did a good job. This was a future draft for them only. I mean, they're bringing back the band pretty much on both both sides of the ball. They return every starter on defense, so there aren't any pressing needs. But they went for future, they went for value, and they went for depth. And so, right off the bat, Joe Tryon, six five, two hundred fifty nine pounder. From Washington, taken at 32. An outside linebacker, you can actually put him in, you know, you can sneak him on the edge a little bit closer to the line if you want. He's really, really good. Uh, and 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 I think he can contribute right away. You know, a third down guy, rotational player, etc. Good value pick here for Tampa Bay. Same thing with Kyle Trask. I mean, look, Tom Brady isn't going anywhere anytime soon, but you got to shore up something. And I, I heard Jason Light, the GM, on several shows say, hey, look, you know, we talked to Tom about bringing in a quarterback. He knows it's not a threat. He's our guy. We just won the Super Bowl. We're going to go for it again. And, uh, you know, this is a future pick. All these picks are basically just what I said. You know, long-term depth, Right. I mean, that's what really they are. I mean, yeah, sure, on occasion there'll be rotational impact players, Tryon and some others who could get in there. I mean, injuries are always going to happen in the NFL. You never know what's going to happen there. Um, but for the most part, it was, it was. I mean, with all the guys coming back on, on a Super Bowl winning team, future, depth, and, um, you know, I think, I think Tryon's going to be really good. I do. Um, depth, long-term, and value. That was the third one. You know, Kyle Trask, of course, a Florida quarterback there at in the second round. Robert Hainsey out of Notre Dame, an offensive tackle. Great pick here. Uh, more protection up front. North Texas wide receiver Jalen Darden gets taken in the fourth round. Know nothing about him. K.J. Britt, inside linebacker Auburn in the fifth. Chris Wilcox, BYU corner in the seventh. Grant Stewart, a Houston outside linebacker taken in the seventh. Overall, yeah, be my, you know what? I'm going to go C with Tampa, actually. I'm going to go C. Um, nothing overwhelming, nothing underwhelming, but again, a C isn't a bad grade when you really didn't have any pressing needs going in as the defending Super Bowl champions. ML Sports Platter brought to you by Rosie's Corner, Axe Exotic Pets, and Ken's Auto Detailing. If you're in and around Central New York, get on over to Ken's Auto Detailing. They've got the unbelievable staff to help you out with your car inside and outside with the complete car detail when you drive away from the lot, you literally feel like you are driving a brand new car. Ken's Auto Detailing, a proud ML Sports Platter sponsor. Let's break down the NFC West now. Um, and and some, some interesting, interesting picks for the LA Rams. Um, you know, they go get Matt Stafford in the trade, you know, with Jared Goff and the like. And they didn't have a first-round pick again. Um and they're looking at, you know, 
probably a little bit of short term, a little bit of long term with this first one. They go out and get two two Atwell out of Louisville. God, he's small, five nine one fifty five. Uh, but he's really, really fast, um, and maybe, 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 maybe not just a downfield threat, but could you plug him into the special teams? Um, yeah, I thought the Rams maybe would have gone offensive line or defense in that first pick, but neither here nor there. They grab uh, they grab Atwell. Um, moving on here again, tons of picks for this club. Ernest Jones, South Carolina inside linebacker in the third round. Bobby Brown in the third. Texas A&M defensive tackle Robert Rochelle out of Central Arkansas, a cornerback, uh, Jacob Harris, Central Florida wide receiver, Ernest Brown the fourth out of Northwestern defensive end, Jake Funk, Maryland running back in the seventh, Ben um, Skoranek out of Notre Dame, a wide receiver, and then Chris Garrett also in the seventh out of Concordia St. Paul, an outside linebacker. So a lot of no-name guys, but I think for Sean McVay, um, they really wanted to just kind of check a lot of check the main box which was need uh and 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 depth you know and they went out and figured out a way to get a bunch of guys at those positions i have no idea if they'll be good uh but some some interesting thoughts there on that atwell pick i thought they could have done a little bit better than that and now i'm sure tutu atwell will end up going to the hall of fame now that i said that but uh i thought Man, second round, your first pick. You know, you got to. It's your first pick of the draft. You kind of think you got. You got to get. So you got to. I don't know about splash, but you got to get maybe do better than Atwell there. Um, it was it was an interesting deal there, kind of a kind of a puzzling puzzling thing. Um, let's move through here the NFC West clubs. Let's go Arizona. Um, <clears throat> I thought the Arizona Cardinals not only had a, a, a B plus or so off season. I'm actually going to give him an A minus draft. It starts with Zayvon Collins. You want to talk about versatile? You want to talk about dynamic? <clears throat> Unbelievable. Tall enough to see into the backfield. He can shoot gaps with the speed. He's strong. He reads the quarterback. He's always around the ball. He flashes incredible talent as a pass rusher. Can pick off balls covering tight ends. 6'5, 259. He's just an absolute freak of a talent out of Tulsa. I think he's going to be a stud for this Cardinal defense, which they've beefed up, of course, with the offseason acquisition of J.J. Watt. I think the Cardinals, you know, really got it together here in this draft. You know what? I'm going to give them an A, actually, because they got Rondell Moore as well at wide receiver. And I think Rondell Moore, like Elijah Moore, I like both Moores going in. Elijah from Ole Miss and Rondell from Purdue. Um, Here's a wide receiver. Uh, who is going to be a long-term fix for them, and he can help you, I think, right away. I think Moore is a guy who they can help. Uh, you know, you got DeAndre Hopkins. you got Moore now, uh, I believe. If Fitzgerald's still deciding to play, is that where we're at with him? This is a great pick. You just keep adding pieces for Kyler Murray. Terrific stuff. Marco Wilson out of Florida. Love this pick as well. I think they could have stolen this guy. Uh, a cornerback in the fourth round, a guy who can measure up with number twos, a guy who you can play a little bit, maybe as a slot nickel. Great pick, awesome versatility here. From there, I don't know a lot about the rest. Victor, uh, is it Dimukiji out of Duke, a, a defensive end? Uh, clearly, they want to get a little bit uh, depth. Again, this is a long-term pick. All these seem to be long-term picks. Tay Gowan out of Central Florida, a corner. James Wiggins, Cincinnati safety, and then Penn State center. Uh, Mikel Minette. So uh, I, I think an A pick because they just slammed it so well. I mean, they just slam dunked uh, with this, with getting uh, Rondell Moore in the second round and Zabin Collins in the first round. I think Zabin Collins is a potential top 10 type talent. They got him at 16. I think Rondell Moore is a 20 to 30 talent in the first round. They got him in the second round. So I, I think Arizona did really, really, really well. All right, moving on. We got two more teams in the NFC West. I already did Arizona, and I did the LA Rams. Uh, we got to fast forward here to uh, the S's. Let's go to Seattle. Um, Seattle didn't do a lot because they didn't have a lot. I mean, they've been blowing draft capital with trades and all the like with the past several years. They only had three picks in this draft, and so I, I'm going to give them a, a C- minus because you need to have more draft capital than three picks, I think, right? I mean, unless you're Tampa coming back with the band, you know, 
I think Dwayne Eskridge out of Western Michigan, a wide receiver, was a wise pick because I think Seattle needs to continue to add weapons with the likes of Lockett and Metcalf and company. Russell Wilson certainly wants more help there, but after all the complaining of the offensive line, I thought maybe that would have forced the hand of the management of uh, Seattle to go with an offensive lineman, but neither here nor there. Uh, Awesome stuff here. Uh, Wide receiver, a playmaking type guy, great hands, dangerous in the slot. And he can return as well. He's got a burst that's uh, that, that really is second to nobody in this draft out of that out of that position. So Seattle looking to get some more playmaking there. Trey Brown, Oklahoma cornerback. Don't know a lot about him, but again, big stage, big twelve. Uh, you know, had to face the biggest, best schemes, pro style offenses, and then Stone Force. I thought of Florida, an offensive tackle. I mean, they only had they had a first round, they had a second round pick. They had no first rounder. They had a second round pick. They had a fourth round pick and a sixth round pick. Goodness gracious! I mean, that's yowzers. Uh, Seattle, not a lot of capital there to work with. You know, San Francisco. I'm going to give San Francisco an A minus. Much like the Chicago Bears, the 49ers went out and got the guy they want. They traded up to get him. They were super aggressive. They scouted the shit out of him. Great stuff. Trey Lance, North Dakota State, just turned 21 years old. Really great quarterback in terms of dropping from under center. He's an awesome possession quarterback. Doesn't give it up a lot. He's got that ball security. And he finished 17-0 and in college. And people, the knock on him, well, you know, he's didn't play anybody. Well, again, that argument doesn't work with me. It doesn't work with many, at least out there. I think the smart analysts would agree. Uh, if you're good, you're good. I think Trey Lance is good. I really do. The question becomes, as we record this, Jimmy Garoppolo is still a 49er with a $20 million cap hit. Do they go with Jimmy G and say, hey, because look, San Francisco has pretty much a Super Bowl roster here. Can Jimmy G do enough of the quarterback position with that Super Bowl roster to get them back to the final game? I mean, can, 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 can he do that? Um, I don't know. If they plug Trey Lance in immediately, I don't know as if they're going to take that much of a step forward. This might be, you know, hey, we get we get to the playoffs with Trey Lance, but, you know, not going to go that far in the postseason. And then it's a 2022 and beyond trying to find your franchise quarterback. That's the only problem with this pick is that you're going with him, but is he going to be in there immediately, or is he? Is it going to be a competition with Jimmy Garoppolo? I'm, I'm imagining it's going to be a competition, but the 49ers have a Super Bowl roster on both sides of the ball. Make no mistake about it. And so I think this is a a a very, I think it's a very good pick. But as far as having one of the top four, four five, six rosters in the NFL, I mean, if Trey Lance gets plugged in there, he's going to be a rookie. I mean, he's a rookie. You know, I mean, can he really get them to the Super Bowl with a Super Bowl roster in year one if he ends up winning the job? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. By the way, the 49ers quarterbacks have had 83 turnovers under Kyle Shanahan, which is tied for third most in the NFL since 2017. And so that is a uh, welcome sign for Shanahan, a QB who can protect it. Aaron Banks out of Notre Dame, an offensive guard. Good move here. More offensive line help to protect. Trey Sermon out of Ohio State. Again, just like, uh, just like uh, multiple other running backs you can get late in the draft, uh, Chuba Hubbard and company, I-, I think this is a steal. Trey Sermon just impressed the shit out of me uh, in the Big Ten games this year, watching him play just an unbelievable north-south, shifty runner with great size and technique. He sees the hole. You get him in the third round. I mean, I, I just think this is a really, really good pick. Uh, for this for this 49er team and can add some depth to the backfield as well. Ambry Thomas, the Michigan corner, uh, taken in the third round. Jalen Moore out of Western Michigan, an offensive guard. Uh, Diamador Lenore out of Oregon, a cornerback taken in the fifth round. Um, then they had two more picks, Tellian, Telenoa Hufanga out of USC, a safety, and then Elijah Mitchell out of Louisiana in the running back position. Uh, respectively in the fifth and sixth round. So uh, don't know a ton about those players at the back end, but certainly am very familiar with Trey Lance, very familiar with Aaron Banks, very familiar with Trey Sermon. I think the 49ers had a good draft. I'll give them a B-plus there. So there's your your NFC East, North, South, West 
team by team's projections, who they took from from where uh, where they came from. Uh, you know, long term, short term, checking some boxes, some great uh, gr- grades as well for these teams. And it was just a fun draft. It was a really good draft. It was fun. Uh, it was it was awesome to uh, to kind of get it back to normal uh, as well. So really good stuff there. Thanks for listening to the ML Sports Platter all over the major platforms where you get your podcasts on your smartphone device. Download, subscribe, leave feedback, and a five star review. We are brought to you by our great friends at Bryant and Stratton College. And Welch and Company Jewelers, log on to welchjewelers.com. That's welchjewelers.com. Shop the showcase today for your, uh, really everything. You've got bracelets, you've got necklaces, you have engagement rings, you have uh, wedding rings and more. Make sure you do indeed log on to welchjewelers.com and shop the showcase today. A big thanks as well to Dave Cho Artwork, Rosie's Corner, the Vince Aguera Consulting Group, and our terrific friends over at Sit Means Sit Syracuse in Central New York. If you're in and around the area, any dog, any breed, any behavior, go get the number one dog training in Central New York at Sit Means Sit Syracuse. Go find them on Instagram and Facebook. Free consultations are available today as well. Sit Means Sit Syracuse, a proud ML Sports Platter sponsor. Hit me on Twitter at Mike L Sports. Thanks for listening, and as I always tell you, enjoy the games. Thank you.